and then I. Good morning. It's good you just, I mean, it's good that you prayed anyway, but you mentioned provider. And that is my talk today. Provider is what I've named it. So the other week, Wes spoke on Psalm 23. And he said, make that your prayer uh, for that week. And I've been doing that and I've been making it my prayer. And what has stuck out to me is we're going to go to Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Yes, you lack nothing. Do we believe that? We lack nothing. That's the NIV. <laughs> the Good News Translation is the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Everything you need is there for you if Jesus is your shepherd. King James Version, I shall not want. You do not need to live in want if you are the Lord's. The Amplified Version says, the Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. You do not have to live in want or lack. Your God is your feeder. He is your guide. He is your shield. He surrounds you and protects you. We have everything we need. Do we know it? <laughs> or do we know it here, but do we know it here? Everything we could possibly want is available to us every living day. God is our Father. Matthew 7, verses, verse 11. It says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So God is our father. Jesus says that we should be like children and have childlike hearts. And as a child, you are fully dependent on your parents to provide for you to feed you and clothe you and look after you. And we need to make sure that we are fully dependent on God because that little independent spirit can creep in. And I know it certainly can do for me where I'm so used to doing things for myself <laughs> that it can, it can go into your spirit and how you deal with everything. And we need to remind ourselves to be like children and to fully lean on God as our father to meet all of our needs. Every need is provided by God for every aspect of life. So your work, I am constantly needing to lean on God in my work, constantly asking him for help our finances, our parenting. I mean, you know, nothing prepares you for parenting, nothing. You can read all the books you want. It's nothing like the real thing. We need to lean on God to give us wisdom for parenting and to bring our children up in the knowledge and the love of him. For church, you know, I've had to lean on God for this here today, <laughs> fully. <laughs> James 1 verse 17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So God wants to give us good things. He wants to give us good gifts. He wants to provide. He's the same God. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He provided for Noah a place of safety in the storm. He provided for the Israelites. He provided escape and food and water and land and probably so on and so on and so on. He provided for Abraham. He provided the ram just at the right moment. And he provided riches. We're told Abraham had lots, cattle and sheep and things. He provided to the apostles courage, strength, the words. The same God provides everything we need. So we have physical provision. 
our food, our clothes, our finances. Matthew 6, 25 to 33. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I really need to let that one go deeper. <laughs> and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? But the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. He knows we need food. He knows we need to pay our electric bill and clothe our children and ourselves. He knows it. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And then it says, don't worry about tomorrow. It's another one I need to learn. <laughs> So God gives us everything we need. Okay, so sometimes it works. For those of you that don't know, I work in a school, I'm a teacher's assistant. And there are times that I am given um, a list of children, groups of children, and they say, right, these are their gaps, these are the targets, and with COVID, there's a lot of them now. <laughs> um, you need to fill it. You need to take them out and teach them these things. But I'm not always given the resources I need to do that. So then I have to spend time collecting the resources together and figuring out, right, how do I teach them this in a way that will be engaging? God will never do that to you. He will never give you a job and not give you every resource that you need to do it. He will provide everything you need. When I was preparing, it was like I was seeing a banquet table that is available to us. And some of us, and I'm including myself, walk past it and forget, <laughs> forget that we can come to this table and say, Lord, right, we need this. Because there's nothing too small or too big or too insignificant to bring to God at all. say so, some testimonies because that's what I do God does good things for us and we should share it because it gives hope to others so over the years um for those of you that don't know I, I presume you all know me by now and you know <laughs> am I okay <laughs> what did you do Jamie <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, so sorry. Um, ten years ago, I was divorced, and I've had to raise my four children on my own. But God has been there every step of the way, and I can stand here and testify, worldly speaking, I should be living in lack. I should be living in want. But praise God, I am not, because he provides every month, he provides enough money. But he does he does make sure that I have to lean on him for it. And that is a good thing because over the years, I have had to learn to rely on him. So we needed a car. So last year, my car is an old car. It was a big car and it kept not starting. So if it didn't start in the driveway, it was a pain because I had to go somewhere and I couldn't go there. But if it took me somewhere and then wouldn't start, it was worse and it was becoming a real nuisance. And I'd had to keep calling, Dad, it's broken down again. <laughs> I'm not a car person, I don't know what I'm doing. 
I know how to drive it, that's it. So I was praying anyway, I prayed, Lord, we really need a car. Um, I'd love to live without one, but it's just not doable. I can't afford a new one. Lord, what do I do? And um, I did say to God, if it is your will to provide me with one, could I have one a bit smaller? Because it's a bit big, parking was a bit of a nightmare. And then, so I was praying for a couple of weeks or so. And then I had, and I hadn't shared this with anyone. I mean, my parents knew, but that was it. And then I had a phone call from a friend who said they had two cars and they were getting rid of both and buying a new one. And my friend said to me, would you like our car as a gift? God, we were praying about it and we felt God say, and they had tried to sell it before and nobody wanted it <laughs> because God was saying, no, <laughs> don't do that. Give it to H. <laughs> so they gave me this car and they said, look, we'll, we'll bring it around and you can have a look. We're not sure it's big enough for you. Um, and we did debate whether to give you our, our big one because they had a big, big, big one. And I said, no, I wanted a smaller one. I said, that's what I've been praying for, a smaller car, not a big, big car. So anyway, they gave us this car. And I've never named cars before in my life because I think it's a bit sad, but I named her Grace <laughs> because that was God's grace. In his grace, he provided a car that was for me, you know, like the three bears, it's perfect, not too big, not too small. It was absolutely perfect. Um, and we've always had a holiday. We could never afford a holiday ever, every year. But the money has always come in because God knew we needed that time away as a family to just chill out and be together. Um, I've probably shared this before, but um, there was uh, my children need to catch the bus to school or needed. They're at college now, but um, and I looked in my wallet the evening before. I think it was probably a Sunday evening, and realised, oh my goodness, I haven't got the cash in there for them to catch the bus the next day. So it was a bit of a panic moment and I sort of, it was late at night. I said, Lord, I give it to you. I'll have to call someone or do something because I knew I had to go to work. Anyway, in the morning, so I left it with God. And then in the morning, I checked my wallet again and there was the exact amount in there <laughs> that they needed. And that was a complete miracle because it wasn't there before. So God cared even about <laughs> the bus money. Um, there was a time when I needed a food shop. It was only a little one, but again, I knew that I didn't have the money there. So I went to the shop and prayed about it and sort of went around with the basket and got to the till and was starting to feel a bit hot and sweaty by this point. And then um, I bent down to get my wallet out of my bag, stood up, and um, my f a family friend had appeared next to me. He was like, oh, hello, hello, okay, bye, in and went. And she said, um, no, he's paid. <laughs> While I was down getting my wallet, he had paid for my shopping. If we need it, pray for it. <laughs> Don't live in want. Don't live in a poverty because you don't need to give us our give us this day our daily bread yes lord's prayer jesus was saying ask for it ask for god's provision that's the bible john 14 john 14 verses 13 to 14 and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Jesus says, come and ask. Come and ask. So, it's not just physical provision. It's spiritual provision. Okay? He will give us everything we need spiritually. James chapter 1, 
verses four to seven. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So stopping there for a second. So I had to learn perseverance. We need to learn perseverance in keeping coming to God, keeping leaning on him and learning to do that. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must have faith and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. So we need to have faith. We need to ask and believe that God will do it. He's a promise keeper. He doesn't lie. He doesn't say in his word, you will not lack and then go, oh, but that's everyone else, not you. You know, if he says he's going to provide, he will provide. He's the same always. If we need it, we ask for it in faith. We have to ask it knowing that he'll give it to us because he loves us, because we're his children. If we need hope, ask for hope. I spent years praying for hope <laughs> and I have it. <laughs> If we need wisdom, I and mean, I think we should all ask for wisdom anyway, not the worldly wisdom that knows nothing. We need to ask for spiritual wisdom, especially in these days. If we need hunger, if we need to be more hungry for God, ask for it. I definitely need to be more hungry for his word. And I'm asking God, give me a hunger and a thirst for you and your word and your presence. I want a fire. I want a fire in my heart. I don't want to be lukewarm. If we need joy or trust or strength, or peace or faith itself, we can ask for it. If you don't ask, you don't get. There's that saying, isn't there? Or have I made that up? If you don't ask, you don't get. Matthew 21. I'll look for it again. Verse 22. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, oh, I'm going further than 22, aren't I? 21 to 22. Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you can, sorry, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, so this is after he's cursed the fig tree with his disciples, but you can also say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. We need to believe it in our heart. We need to not doubt. Because God loves us and he wants to do it for us. He wants, he doesn't want us to live in, in lack and in want. He wants to show his glory. And by giving us these things, he's showing his glory. So one, Sorry. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 5 and then verse 7. So Paul to the Corinth church, he says, For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. So have we. That's not just for the Corinth church. We have been enriched in every way because we have the Holy Spirit. Verse seven, therefore do not lack, therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. That's still true for us. We don't lack any spiritual gift. If we need a spiritual gift, we ask for it. Every spiritual gift is available to us. Every physical need is provided. Do we truly believe it? Are we living every day as if that is true? I struggle to. Doubt creeps in, it slithers in like, to, like a snake. But it's true, and we can stamp on that snake in Jesus' name. We can stamp on the doubt, and we can declare and say, no, everything I need is provided to me. Everything, every spiritual gift, every... When I look at my bank balance, and the enemy tries to get me to, to live in fear, I can say, no, I will not doubt, I will not fear because God is my provider. I am his daughter, and so are you. There's a kind of spiritual poverty in this world. 
as well as a physical poverty. It's not God's will. He doesn't want us to live like that. He doesn't want us to, to walk past the banquet table and, and ignore all the, the stuff there for us. We live in a spiritual poverty when we forget or refuse to look to God to our needs, when we ignore the help of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying we'll do it purposely, but well, some, some churches do ignore the Holy Spirit, and I pray for them, I really, really do. But if we're ignoring that help, we're not leaning on him. And when you lean on someone, you trust them. It's like, you know, that trust building exercise where you, you have to fall back and they catch you. That's what we need to learn, to trust God that he's going to catch us, that we can lean back on him and he will catch us. Because when we choose to rely on ourselves or people or things instead of God, our hearts and our spirits become neglected. And like a body becomes ill if you neglect it, if you don't feed it or look after it, so will our hearts and our spirits. And we won't have that relationship with God as our father, our provider, because like I said before, you as a child, you trust your parents to provide for you. If we're not seeing God as our providing father, then that relationship with him has suffered. I'm not saying it's easy. Not at all. Sometimes, sometimes those answers to prayer aren't immediate. <laughs> Like with the shop is it the till <laughs> it's um you have to wait and it's a testing it's a, a faith growing it's the stretching those times where god says wait and it's that that growing of that faith but in those times we can remind ourselves of all those times God has provided and has shown his love for us and his provision and his love. You know, I can remind myself of the wallet with the cash that was in there ready. Because he does answer time and time again. And like the Psalmist, we can say, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God because he will answer. If it is a need, it will be met. I'm not saying that everything we want is provided for us. I'm not saying I can go to that banquet table and order a Ferrari and a million pounds. God does love to bless us. He's our father. He loves to give us good things, but he gives us good things that he knows are good for us and his kingdom. He doesn't give us things that for our greedy nature. You know, I mean, I love giving gifts to people. I love to see their face. I love to, to bless them in that way. How much more then does God love to bless us? But again, it should be for his glory. You know, if I gave my children everything they wanted, they'd be awful people. <laughs> they'd be just so shallow and selfish and probably fat because of all the sweets that they would have been ordering. <laughs> so he doesn't give us everything we want, but he does give us everything we need and everything he knows that is good for us and his kingdom. You know, it says, seek first the kingdom of heaven, doesn't it? If we're seeking first the kingdom, then we're going to be asking for the right things. Jesus said, ask in my name. If we're in alignment with the heavenlies, if we're beating with the Father's heart, you know, if we're seeking him and listening out for him and having our spiritual eyes tuned in to him and his will in the heavenlies, then we're asking for the right things because we're in alignment with the Father. Yeah. And I just, as we continue in 2022, I pray that we all learn to lean in on the Father fully, to trust him for everything, for all that we need physically and spiritually. 
I had a dream uh, once that basically interpreted as trust me, not man. You know, we can look to our wages, we can look to our benefits, we can look to our partners and look to those things to provide for us. But they're going to let us down. They don't mean to, but they're going to let us down. People, things, money will always let you down. We need to lean on God and look to him for all of those needs and not, not lean on the worldly things. Yeah, I'm just going to pray. Lord, I just pray that you bless each one of our hearts. I pray in the name of Jesus that we learn to lean on you for everything, for every area of our lives, that we don't hold anything back from our hearts, from you, that we give you our work life, our home life, our spiritual life, our church life, we give you our children, and I just put our finances, everything. I pray that we lay it all out before you. We don't hold anything back and that we learn to fall back. And like that trust exercise where you lean back and you fall back, sometimes the person catches you right at the last minute. And I just pray that although sometimes you catch us at the last minute, that we still have that faith building in you, that trust. Because even if you catch us at the last minute, it's still for our good because you're building up our faith in you. You're building up our trust. You're stretching us. And you will always catch us, always. So I pray that that will just go deep into our hearts and that we will in our lives be bright flames in this world and we will glorify you and that people will ask how come you're not living in fear how come you're not anxious about your bank balance and we can say why because we're trusting in god he's our father psalm 23 verse 1 i will not lack in jesus name amen